Rumble Roses. Yeah, before I was a voice actor, I was a radio broadcaster for 35, 36 years. I did uh, morning shows, I did afternoon drive, and I was production director at many radio stations, including one in San Diego where I happened to meet Lonnie Manella. She's a well-known casting director and was helping to cast the part of Duke Nukem along with uh, several other games. And I met her in my studio while she came in to uh, record, a, I think, an auto dealer commercial. And uh, the two of us hit it off. She asked me if I'd like to voice act in video games, to which I responded, what? I mean, this was 1995. I didn't know there was voice acting in video games. I think there was very little at the time. But she got me into the industry, and uh, Duke Nukem 3D was among the first games that I auditioned for and got. Well, the inspiration for Duke Nukem's voice, uh, it's funny, it came from two different uh, angles. I think George Broussard, the creator of the character, originally had, uh, I think it was Charles Bronson in mind. Uh, but Lonnie Manella, who was in the studio directing me, said, no, think more of uh, Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood. And so I, uh, with George Broussard on the phone line, I, I said the line, go ahead, make my day. And George said, well, I really like the sound of that, but think bigger. You know, Duke's on steroids. He's he's huge. So I just dropped it way down in pitch and came up with, go ahead, make my day. And then I read the lines, come get some. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? And he knew right then that that was the voice he wanted. The rest is history. I've been Duke since 1995. I think uh, for those who really panned Duke Nukem Forever who didn't like it, I think those were uh, critics who were in their 20s, 20-somethings, who never played the original Duke 3D, so they didn't get it to start with. Also, the game sat on the shelf for, what, 12, 14 years, however long, and so the graphics were never upgraded. The game engine was, you know, old. It didn't have the look of a modern-day first-person shooter. It's not Call of Duty. You know, and I think that's what they expected when it came out, when Duke Nukem Forever was released. So that's why critics panned it, I think. It was because they expected much more. And and to be honest, it was really hyped. I helped in the hype of Duke Nukem Forever myself because I was so damned excited to have it finally coming out. And I, I think uh, overhype might have hurt the image of Duke Nukem Forever as well. Um, some of the other voices I've done in games include uh, Axe, who I think is the favorite in uh, Dota 2. Axe is Axe! Axe has a lot of fans. And he makes ridiculous statements using Axe in them, like, That was excellent! <laughs> you know? He is an aggressive Axe-wielding character, and I like doing the voice of Axe. Let's see, there's, of course, uh, Big the Cat from the Sonic the Hedgehog games, which I was never proud of that voice at all. I just kind of threw it out when Lonnie Manella, again, casting for the Sonic game, asked me to be in the game. And I said, sure, I'll be in it. What what part do you have for me? She goes, well, we got this big, stupid cat you could do. And I said, well, what's he supposed to sound like? She said, well, big and stupid. And so I went, where's my froggy? I, you don't look so good, little buddy. I was just messing around. And she goes, no, 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 that'll be perfect. Okay, let's record. And I'm like, no, please. Does it have to be that? And so, yeah, that became the voice of Vig the Cat. I'm not proud of it, but there you go. Uh, other parts, let's see, include, uh, say, Admiral Kunkka or even King Varian Rin, the first King Varian Rin in World of Warcraft. That was me a long time ago. And I believe that character has been changed many times over the years. But um, that was just me doing kind of a lame Patrick Stewart impression. Like, um, this is Admiral Kunka. 
This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Mr. LaForge, please remove your visor. And engage. Well, anyway, that's my impression of Patrick Stewart, which I've used in a few games over the years. And then more recently, uh, I'm involved in a game called This is the Police, a film noir-looking uh, detective series where you have to, you know, make choices for this retiring cop who just has kind of an indescript East Coast, Mid-Atlantic maybe kind of accent, Jack Boyd. Detective Jack Boyd who just talks like this. You hear what I'm saying? Sounds like he's been drinking whiskey and smoking cigars his whole life. Well... And then along those lines, I'm also uh, the game console, the old retired game console that comes to life in the new uh, game called Rad Rogers. And that's, that's just me doing my New Yorker. Hey, kid, wake up, kid. Wakey, wakey. It's not polite to sleep during a cutscene, you know. I am not familiar with the mod, Duke Nukem Forever 2013. Um, I've not played it. I've not seen it. I assume my voice is in it. Um, <laughs> I'm not really a gamer as much as I'm a voice actor, so I, I don't have a lot of time to play games. I used to until my son turned like 12 years old, and at that point he kicked my ass every time we ever gamed it together, so I kind of gave it up back then. Oh, my son is now 24, by the way. Well, I guess uh, when you ask that question, oh, God, why did I give this thing a voice? We, we have to revert back again to Big the Cat because, really, that's just a terrible voice. And I know fans get a kick out of hearing me say that because there are a lot of people who love the Big the Cat character. Why? I don't know. But, you know, they played the game hearing that stupid voice over and over again, and it became the voice of Big the Cat. So, yeah, I... I kind of regret giving that a voice. I mean, I don't mind the uh, notoriety for it, but the that particular voice, ugh. Yeah, I've said in interviews before that the original recordings, they made me keep my teeth clenched together like this the whole time, which I didn't like because uh, enunciation was... Uh, 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 not good, and also being 8-bit recordings, the quality was shit, so I thought it made it kind of hard to understand some of the dialogue, and in later games, and Duke Nukem Forever, when I was self-directed, and I could, you know, you know, use the same voice, but not clench my teeth the whole time, it just made it cleaner and nicer. You know, I still have anger in my voice, and, you know, Duke is pissed at aliens, but at the same time, uh, I could be a little more emotive by not having my teeth clenched together the whole damn time. Regarding those who think the original voice work was better, well then, play the new Duke Nukem World Tour, the 20th anniversary. I went back to the original files and mimicked them almost exactly, but now in a 16-bit recording, and it's much clearer I think it sounds far better, but I'm delivering the lines the same exact way I did in Duke Nukem 3D. So, uh, you guys got a problem with that? Fuck you. I'm the voice of Duke, and I'm gonna stay the voice of Duke. Now get back to work, you slackers. There were various different versions of Duke Nukem that I either liked or very much disliked. Um, I think the Duke that you see on the cover of 3D or the Atomic Edition, that's the look that I like in Duke Nukem. I think they did a pretty good job of that in Duke Nukem Forever, too, keeping that look very similar. I've seen other renditions that I didn't particularly care for. Duke's style should be changing and evolving over the years. Maybe they should make him look a little older. I don't know. What do you think? I'm absolutely fucking thrilled. Are you kidding? Duke Nukem 3D with updated graphics, new 16-bit sound, uh, stereo music that sounds just bitchin', 
eight new levels to play, going back to the old days where you get to carry all of the weapons, not just two. Come on. This is awesome. It's a not a modern graphics version, but a very well uh, restored, cleaned up uh, version of Duke Nukem 3D, and it brings back the fun gaming to all new consoles. I think it's a tremendous thing. If you grew up playing Duke Nukem 3D, it's a must-have. If you're a millennial, I, don't bother. And, and if you do buy it and you don't like it, millennials, don't write up some fucking review saying that it, it sucked. You know, just don't buy it. I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. You know, I have a hard time answering that because, again, I am not a gamer. I'm not familiar with uh, the characters that you refer to in that question. So I, I can't give a good answer to that question. Who would Duke Nukem's female sidekick be joining him in his journeys? And dude, I, I, I do not know. If I had to give a lame-ass answer, I'd, I'd say, I, I don't know, Wonder Woman. At least some superhero chick with a huge rag. Big titties. Yeah, big titties. Yeah, I can absolutely see a Duke Nukem movie happening sometime in the future. I mean, he's an iconic character. Many other video games uh, with characters not even as recognizable as Duke have uh, had films made already. And uh, personally, I'd love to see it, of course. I mean, as the, the, the voice of Duke, I would absolutely love to see the, the uh, popularity of the character reinvigorated. I mean, it just makes my career better, and I get to go to more conventions around the world. <laughs> of course, if they do make a Duke Nukem movie, I really, really, really wish I've got all my fingers and toes crossed right now as I say this. Ow, that little... Oh, you son of a bitch. Anyway, they're all crossed when I say, I hope they make a CG Duke Nukem movie, an R-rated frickin' CG Duke Nukem movie. A, you can do anything you want with CG. B, I could be the voice actor. <laughs> C, I would uh, make a lot of money probably. I don't know. The money isn't that big a deal. It's the character living on is what I really hope for. Because I'm an attention whore. It's the fame I want. I don't care about the money so much. I want the fame. And Duke teaming up with uh, other characters? Yes, I can definitely see that being something that can and probably will happen in the not-too-distant future. Of course, I don't really have any knowledge of any of this. <laughs> so... That's the answer to that question. And, and thank you so much for having me on your program. I really appreciate it. It's, it's been an honor. Mr. Rumble Roses, you fucking rock.